Hi everyone. I am using my headphone microphone this time around um, to hopefully work on the sound quality. I know there was a buzzing sound in the background of the last video, so hopefully this helps to solve that issue and hopefully it's not too much of a distraction as you're watching this. Um, so this month's book reviews, uh, I have five different books for you. We have The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. We have The Great Believers by Rebecca McKay. We have The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. We have Goodbye Vitamin by uh, Rachel Kong. And the fifth one is Text Me When You Get Home by Kayleen Schaefer. Now, as we talked about previously, I'm not going to go through each one individually in these videos. Um, I'm going to do that in a blog post, and so you can read all about each one of those in the blog post. However, for the videos, I wanted to take a moment to maybe talk about any overarching themes amongst the books that I have read um, in a given period of time. It hasn't quite been a month. I am not on that on my toes, apparently. Um, and uh, so we'll get right into it. I did notice a theme funny how that works out right um this time around uh, a majority of the books switched perspectives and periods of time or both and or both um so what do I mean by that so here's a couple examples the in the dreamers um Karen Thompson Walker introduces a bunch of different characters and you see various characters perspectives throughout the book um and then but in the great believers that book switches um, setting as well as perspective. So that setting is in time period as well as perspective. Um, so in that book, you go from 1980 Chicago to early 2000s Paris, and you go from um, Yale's perspective to Fiona's perspective, which is very cool. Um, let's see. The final example that I have a third example from this time around is the broken girls. Now in this book, you, um, switch time and perspective as well. So in the present day, you have one person. And then when you go back in time to about the 1950s, I believe, um, you have a couple of different people that, and you get to read from their perspective, which is very interesting. Um, I also have another book that I recently read but is not reviewed in this post, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk. In that book, you do not switch perspective, but you do switch periods of time. So as she goes through New Year's Eve in 1984, she also walks down memory lane and you get to see, um, you know, the different time periods throughout her life, which is really, um, it, it's interesting how that all really comes together, um, and the sort of plays on how much time is actually happening as she's going through this. Um, so from a reader's pers reader perspective, I think this really keeps you on your toes. It also adds in details that you might not have gotten if you hadn't switched perspective. So if you're thinking about uh, the broken girls, you might not have gotten the perspective of the students at the school without going back in time and being in their perspective because presumably the person in the... Um, main character the who is in present day wasn't born at that point in time um so it allows you to get more detail it keeps you on your toes um from an author's perspective and a writer's perspective I think that this allows a lot of different dimensions and for your creativity to come out and what I mean by that is that there are a lot of details that go into, you know, keeping track of which type, period of time you're in, keeping track of which character. You have to build different settings, different worlds at the same time. And then how do these two things interact? So I had talked a little bit about how Lillian Boxfish's periods of time interact. Um, and then in The Great Believers, these two timelines, the 1980s and 2000s, and these two different people, they the way that the author is able to, to sort of, the two periods of time are coming at um, one distinctive point that you come to realize about like halfway through it. And, um, or at least I did, and <laughs> they converge at one very specific intersection um, at the end of the book where, you know, all the reader knows all of the information at that point and then, you know, we're also reading about it. Um, so both the author and the reader, I think, benefit from this literary technique, and I know that I really enjoy it as a reader, obviously, since um, I've read four books recently about it, or that have that at play, 
Um, so what did you guys think about this? How is it something that you consider when you're reading a book? Is it something that you enjoy as you're reading different books? Let me know in the comments. Um, and as always, happy reading.